We live in an increasingly mobile world. Today, more than at any time in the past, we are in the position of being able to travel wherever we want, whenever we want. These days, we think very little about getting on a plane to fly domestically to another city in our own country or internationally to a far-flung destination. But it's important to remember that the first commercial transatlantic flights didn't start until the 1950s and, for a long time, flying was a time-consuming and expensive business that simply wasn't accessible to everyday people. Technology fueled the development of international transport, but even more significantly, it has also transformed the experience of international travel and communication beyond all recognition. In the past, for those who travelled internationally for leisure or to live and work in another country, communicating with family and friends back home was a challenge. Less than a hundred years ago, people had to rely on letters that could take months to arrive. While you were moving around and didn't have an address, you had to get mail sent to the local post office. This was called post restante. If something was urgent, you had to send a telegram. But today, it's now nearly as easy to stay in touch with a friend living or travelling on the other side of the world as it is with the one standing next to you. For younger travellers, it's almost impossible to imagine how people explored other countries and lived overseas in a world before the internet and mobile technology. Nora is from Ireland, but she is currently living and working in England. Mark is British. He's lived and worked all over the world. But now he lives back in the UK, where he grew up. Um, uh, my name is Nora. I'm from uh, Galway in the west of Ireland. Um, I'm 22 and I'm um, living in Oxford now. Um, I've been to uh, quite a few different countries, um, just traveling and tourism trips, but I've also um, worked abroad a bit. Um, so right now I'm working in Oxford in the UK, but I've also lived abroad in France for studying for one year. And I've worked as an English language teacher in summer camps in Italy. And I've also volunteered um, in institutions with children and adults with special needs in Belarus. Uh, and this summer I was in uh, Hong Kong and Shanghai uh, teaching in summer schools there. My name is Mark, I'm 54 years old and now I live in Oxford in England but before that I've lived quite a number of places all over the world. I lived quite a long time in Spain, seven years in total in a couple of different places and I've lived in Italy and I also lived a couple of years in South America in Colombia. Um, I've, apart from that they're probably the only places I've lived for a long time, a longish time but um, I've traveled quite a lot in different countries all over the world. I've traveled quite a long time in India. I think of myself as a citizen of the world. Home is where I am. I don't have a strong roots either in a particular town or even in a particular country. So I feel European. I can feel at home quite easily in many parts of the world, many places that I've been. I like that freedom of sort of living, you know, traveling and having not much stuff. While Mark and Nora have visited some of the same places, they have had very different experiences of international travel. Mark started to explore the world long before the internet and social media. I think about the big trip that I made sort of after university when I went to India. I was there nearly a year. At this time, you didn't have very much contact with people back at home because, of course, we didn't have the internet. You had your rucksack and your guidebook and um, your Lonely Planet guide. And really, the contact you had with people at home was postcards, occasional letters. You'd get, get letters sent out to Poste Restante in, like, little post offices in different places in India where I figured I was going to be in a month's time or around Christmas. But you're always communicating with people. You're always reading what people have written a month or so earlier and 
they're reading what you wrote a month or so later because it would take a long time. For the, I don't think at the time I was in India, I don't think I made more than one or two phone calls home. For most of his early travels, Mark had to rely on a film camera to record his experiences. He didn't see the photos he had taken until he returned home and had the photos developed and printed out. When I was in India, I had a terrible little camera and I took one film of pictures the whole time. There were 36 pictures in the entire trip. <laughs> and most of them didn't come out, of course, because that was the way it was in those days. Nora has only experienced travel in the Facebook age. Of course, I take my phone. I don't take a camera because I just have a camera on my phone, uh, which I think is quite common nowadays. I normally use um, messaging apps, um, so classic Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, um, those kind of applications that I think are very popular these days. And as well, I think um, it's not exactly directly keeping in contact but when you post photos on um, social media, people can like and comment on it. And it's, it's almost like you're not having a direct conversation with people, but it's like they kind of know what's going on in your life in a funny way and you can kind of keep up to date with their news without directly interacting with it. Uh, I do think that it's, yeah, it's a really big part of my life using social media and messaging people. I hope that doesn't sound too sad, but I don't think that's that unusual either. Today, when we share so much of our lives on social media, the photographs we take aren't just reminders of the places we have seen on our travels. And I know perhaps sometimes I feel a little bit distracted and keep thinking about the impact that my travels might have on my social media presence or something like if I see um, a nice castle or something, I'm like, oh, I must take a photo of that and put it on Facebook and what caption should I write on it and what filter can I use on Instagram? So maybe you're not living in the moment quite so much. I think if, if I lost my phone, I'd be really devastated. If I didn't have access to my Facebook account, it would be really difficult to get in contact with people. It's a, you know, it sounds like a nightmare situation. Like, you know, maybe I'm dramatizing it a bit, but I think it would be really difficult. There's no question that technology has transformed our experience of travel. But maybe it's also changing our idea of what home means. Can you really ever miss home when it's never more than a touch away?